Okay, so the final thing I am going to show you now is automations. Now, just to let you know, automations is a very big feature for MooSense, so there's a lot going on. Um, what I'm going to show you is kind of some rudimentary things you can do with automations, um, but I'll try and be concise yet informative at the same time. So if automations, first place you want to start is the automations tab over here. Now, the first page you come to automations that have already been set up, ones that are active, ones that are inactive. Uh, these all need to be inactive now. And they each come with their own reports as well, just to let you know how well they've done, uh, when they've been triggered, so on and so forth. But for the case of this, we're just going to start with a new automation or a, a generic automation for you to move on to. So when you click on the new automation, the first thing you brought up into is what we call our recipes. So recipes are basically pre-made automations that have already been set up. Um, obviously, that doesn't consist of any particular rules, but the actual workflow uh, or the framework is in place for you to basically start uh, moving things, uh, moving things in there to, to behave the way that you want them to. So, um, a typical uh, a typical automation that most people use, especially in e-com and retail, is abandoned cart. So if I give you an idea what an abandoned cart automation looks like by clicking on that recipe. So the trigger is always the first thing start, starting off with. So this is always the first point of call is you're going to be your trigger. And the trigger that's already set up here is when someone has placed a product in their cart. So that's when the automation starts. And you would have integrated your website at this point. So you can put all websites or uh, you know, or a specific website, depending on how many websites you have integrated in there, and you can save it. And then you can wait 45 minutes, um, or 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, however, however long you think it should have taken for them to check out. Uh, be honest, most people usually leave it, leave it about two hours. And you can save that. So if two, two hours have happened, you've got to filter contacts, so it's going to be the next stage. So what we're going to do is double check. So we go back to the automation. So we're checking uh, if somebody from a particular email list has purchased a product and it's false in the last two hours. Okay. So if it's false, that means that basically that's an abandoned that's an abandoned cart. There's a product waiting that's been set in this particular person's cart for more uh, for for two hours. So you can save that. So if the answer is yes, so it's the filtering is yes, that's true, that someone has left something in the cart for two hours, then you can send out a campaign based on that. So the campaign can be created in here. To be honest, you should already have a campaign created using the campaign manager. Uh, you go to select sender, and rather than have a subject, you can select, um, I don't have a specific campaign set up for abandoned cart, so I can just use Damien testing because that's me and it will bring in all that data from there and you can decide whether you want an unlimited cap uh, or up to one email per day most people go for unlimited um, because they may add further things into the cart later on and what will happen is if I add more things into the cart and don't check out if you have only one cap it means no matter how many items they put into the cart you would only receive that only send out that single email where if they keep on adding more to the cart then obviously that process will start again and again and again um, based on every time they add something to the cart and not check it out after two hours okay so we can go to so you can have your own subject line so subject line would be Hey, did you forget me? Okay, and you can send. You can also have automation set up for this as well, so you can fetch from this and just go save. So on the live account, you'll have the option to be able to actually use personalization within that subject line. So you can say, hey, Mr. Smith, or hey, Mrs. Smith, um, did you forget me? And you can use that as well. Uh, so that's a basic step for an automation, um, you know, based on activity coming from your website. Uh, if I go to 
a automations again and uh, create a new automation what you can do also is you can set up you can create custom automations so you can select your trigger um, so some automations can happen from like a registration email or for example a newsletter so if you send out a newsletter with several links on it you can basically say when someone clicks on a specific link in a specific campaign okay you can set this a trigger just once um, we I usually say for every click because if you've got more than one link they can come back to the original email and click on a different link as well if you've only got it one down for once then you won't you you only only get it on the first link and there's uh you can select what link it is um, so we used the American Express email didn't we previously so if you go there and save so anyone who clicks on a link in a specific campaign or that specific link it starts to start with automation so you can again it's always advisable to wait to allow uh, basically the service to to run their course and pick up that that's actually happened so I'd usually say wait probably about 10 minutes and then save and then you can enter a filter select so to to apply to any mailing list or a specific mailing list so if someone's clicked a link in a specific campaign in any mailing list you can add a condition and a condition could be uh, link URL and then if they've clicked on American Express and then save and then that filter can go into yes so if the answer is yes you may want to wait another 15 minutes just for the or 10 minutes for the server to catch up you save and then you can basically say you want an action and the action could be anything from send an email campaign uh, through to um, subscribe to a different list because um, if you subscribe to a different list will usually help if you're studying like that um, customer behavior but not looking to basically act on the links they clicked in uh, but for this instance um, we're going to say you know we want you to send out an email campaign so thanks um, your interest in MX uh, travel insurance or travel points Okay, and have the sender, and you can select a particular campaign, and MX benefits, MX travel, and then save. And again, that is completely customizable on the live account. It's completely you can use personalization for that. Um, also, what you can do, uh, so for example, if they haven't, if nothing's happened in there, you can set up a different filter. So go into control action sorry and from actions you can put them onto another automation so if you, can, you can actually rather than having a nice long automation which has like several tree branches that reach across your page if you're using similar automations throughout uh, a particular client or particular product line then you can start stringing these um, these automations together uh, and then you can basically stop them together like jigsaw puzzle so so if you go for you know and go to, that's that automation so yeah, if the, if the answer is no, then it will throw them into another automation, which would then look at a different set of rules for you in regards to the links they may have they may have been clicking, and uh, and then trigger a campaign based on that. So this is a this is kind of a, a generic um, build for uh, customer journeys in regards to where their clicks have been in uh, existing emails and what links they've clicked on. Um, just to give you some further oversight uh, kind of things that you can. Look at so if you want to change the trigger, you can go to trigger list and the kind of triggers you got uh, all across here. When someone opens any campaign or specific campaign or click on any link, 
specific okay so any link within a specific campaign um, when we already covered a, a link within a, spe a specific link within a specific campaign uh, when someone some people don't open your campaign so basically this is good for um, non openers um, when some people don't uh, don't click my campaign so that can be that can be specific to particular users or specific, or specific um, specific segments um, when someone else subscribes from a list uh, when someone subscribes to a specific link so with some of that automations you, one of the options would be when you see a customer behavior um, it will put them on to subscribe them to a specific list and that specific list can have its own automation set up for it any custom field that changes as well um, or if you've got a value if a value changes you can send out anything on that or when a specific date is reached um, when anyone browses, moving over to like web integrations now, so and when anyone browses any particular page, um, when someone views any product, when someone views a specific product, uh, when someone adds something into the cart, um, yeah, the list goes on and on. When someone exits a page, it's always a good one. So if you're looking to be able to pull back on retention on bounce rates from your web pages, and that's a great, that's a great automation to use as well. Uh, it can even be called custom events as well, which is, in my opinion, very good. Um, if you go to some of the uh, actions that you can perform, so I already covered uh, triggering of automation. Uh, you can change a custom field when something happens, which you know can then trigger off different automation you've got set up. Uh, you can also use web, uh, you can post web hooks. So if you're looking, uh, if you like using an SMS provider. Um, you can also send them notifications via SMS based on their behavior on email. Um, and uh, the same kind of rules when you're increasing or decreasing certain value fields as well. Then cancel that. And we went to so look at filters. So filters, you can basically anything that's included over as a custom, you know, customizable field or anything related to uh, you know for the date added for example is the date they were added to a list is before you know before today's date for example they can send them out an email based on that um, uh, you, you want to target by specific device types or specific email clients um, especially if you're looking at having different uh, campaigns set up on uh, on mobile devices, when you can see people open up on mobile devices, you can then send a different email out, you know, which is better optimized and uh, is actually more mobile friendly, rather than having to worry about uh, making sure you've got a device which is clear on more than one, uh, more than one um, platform. Uh, when someone purchases a product, you can say thank you, uh, you know, you'll follow up with uh, other product suggestions based on a the product they just bought. Um, you can by geographical location, if they're part of a company, their date of birth, you want to send birthday you know, birthday greetings. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's loads and loads of things you can do with automations. Um, one thing I'd always say about automations, is best to have an idea what you want to plan, you know, take a look at automations first. Um, but if you want to start planning an automation, it's always best to put it down in the storyboard first, rather than relying on, a, you know, relying on the interface for it to work out for you, because um, usually what happens is, you know, a storyboard is, is is in your own mind, and that way you don't have to worry about trying to um, key in to specific aspects on what you see in front of you here. Because you've got a storyboard, then you can refer to that um, and and use that as a as a means to be able to to, to move forward and learn. Uh, obviously, once you've got the handle of automations, you can probably m remove the storyboards, and you can actually start using automations without the need of a storyboard. Okay, so what else can I tell you about the automations? You can uh, edit the automation name, so we can call it uh, Musen Test. Test, always hit enter afterwards to make sure it saves it. Okay, that's been changed. You can save it as a recipe as well. So I spoke earlier about recipes that have already been pre-created. Pre you can create your own recipes and save this as a recipe. Um, and one thing we want to make sure is once you're happy with your automation, you have all your automation set up and all the campaigns behind it, is this button here. You need to activate it, otherwise it won't run. And that's it. That's your automation running. 
Uh, and very briefly, you can go into your reports and you also see some of these uh, campaign names have uh, automation. So these are basically specific reports to your automation and allow you to be able to pinpoint what's what's been happening with those specific automations. It helps you out in regards to which particular content has been good or which has been bad or which has, you know, which has helped uh, convert or which is not really great, you know, a great automation for conversion. So it's a very, uh, yeah, it's a useful tool to be able to see the, the actual progress of a specific part of an automation as well. And um, yeah, that is it. So thank you very much. Take care.